Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to another episode of our Endless Runner Unity tutorial series. So, in today's episode, we're going to take a look at adding a new main menu to our game, which is going to take place in a completely different scene from our normal running along guy in the world. Because at the moment, all we have here is just in our scenes folder, we have just this one endless level, or whatever you call it, um, for our character to be run along in. And we need to make a new area with our main menu. So what we're going to do is go up to file here, file and a new scene and we get a new brand new blank scene and we're just going to save this scene here and we're going to go into our scenes folder just so everything's all organized together and we'll just call this main menu and we're going to just make a very simple and very straightforward main menu for our game because all we really need to do is say when you first load up the game all you're really going to want to do is just play the game from there or else quit the game and go off and do something else about your day I don't know what you'd want to do but anyway yeah so now that we have our new scene we need to put some stuff in so we go game object UI and what we're going to do is add a button and this button is going to be well it's going to be a button basically so what happens when we add UI much as we had with the um, adding text to our screen is it creates a really big area in our scene space so we want to zoom out so that we can see all of that. And as you can see, it's been add it's added a button down here uh, in the bottom left. And that's not really very useful. So we're going to drag that button up and we'll put it round about there, say. Uh, and then on our position anchor thing, we're going to go here. And we're just going to set it to be stretched out like that. So that it readjusts to the size of the full window, basically. Uh, actually, no, that doesn't look good. We won't do that. We'll set it to be based off the middle there like that so if you maximize there we go it moves it moves around just a little bit okay so that's fine so we've got a little button so but just having a little button there isn't very interesting we need to do some stuff so at the moment by default the button gets a few properties based on it which are essentially if we hit play here once it just starts running you'll see there we go. So when you hover over it very slightly, it gets a tiny bit darker. It might be a little bit hard to see, but then when you click on it, it gets darker again. So let's make that a bit more distinctive. And the way we can do that is over here on our button script. So as you can see here, we've got the normal color, which is whatever color it is there. Uh, we've got the highlight color, which is slightly darker. And we've got the pressed color, which is darker again. And that's not very interesting. Let's make it a little bit more distinctive uh, just for the purposes of showing off here obviously you might want to do some other different stuff with your buttons you can change out how it appears and stuff like that but we're not going to worry too much about that for now we're making a very simple and very straightforward button system so there we go we've got a couple of different colors here now so now if we press play again once it starts going we can hover over it goes a nice color of red click on it it changes to blue so at least we can see what's going on here um Okay, so we've got one button here, but we don't want it to just say button. That's no use to us. What kind of interesting is that? So if we drop down the little triangle thing here, we get a text UI element. And then within that, where it says button here, we can simply delete that and replace it with, say, play game. Uh, I'm going to make the color of this a little bit darker so it stands out a bit more. Um, and we'll leave it at that size. That's fine. The text size is fine. Uh, so we'll actually, and here we're just going to rename this button here to uh, play button because we're, we have this one button here so essentially this will be our button to start the game but then we're going to need another button to quit the game so if we just simply click on that oops, we just click on the play button here and we're just going to duplicate it by pressing ctrl and d so we create an extra copy of it and in our window here we'll click on the direction uh, movement object thing and we'll just drag it down so it's slightly below and obviously we don't want it to be plain we don't want two play buttons so we're just going to rename this to quit button so that we know what it is and again we're going to drop down our text and change that to quit game so now we have play game and quit game and we're also just going to add just for interest sake if we go game object UI and click text we're going to add a little title screen for our game so I'm going to resize this text box so it's just the full width and about half the size 
um, and we're going to center the text, make it white, uh, and we'll make it we'll make it bold as well, and we'll call our game endless runner goodness. I don't know, that'll do. With an exclamation mark for exciting, uh, and we'll make it the font size. We'll just scroll it up so it appears nice and big, and then we'll just drag it down from the top of the screen a little bit, I suppose. There we go. So now we've got an interesting enough looking title screen, just so it's a little bit more interesting than just having two buttons here. Okay, so now we have two buttons, but obviously if we hit play here, there's not too much exciting going, excitement going to be happening because they don't do anything yet. If we click on them, they don't, nothing happens. We can hover away over them. Nothing good is going on. Okay, so we need them to actually do some stuff and for them to be able to do anything, we need to create a script. So we'll go into our scripts folder and create a new C sharp script called main menu. And we're going to load that up in MonoDevelop. Now obviously our main menu our menu menu script is going to be very straightforward because we've only got two things that we wanted to do. We wanted to be able to play a game when we click the button. So we basically we wanted to switch to our scene that we use for our endless runner. Uh, or we want to quit the game, which means it'll quit out of whatever program is running. So if it's running on the desktop or on a computer here, it'll just quit out of that and go back to that. Or else if you're running on mobile, it'll quit out of your your mobile app and return to your home page or whatever. Uh, so once this is loaded up in a second, sometimes it takes a little while to load up Mono Develop. Um, but like I said, this will be a very straightforward system that shouldn't cause too many problems. Um, here we go. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is get rid of our start and our update because we're not using them at all. And we're going to create um, two functions that are going to use the, the play game are going to be used for our play game and quick game buttons. So we'll just say public public void. Uh, play game and our brackets and our curly brackets to open and close that and down here we'll just say public void quit game with our brackets again and our curly brackets so we'll just do a quick game one first because it's a bit more straightforward and basically in our quick game literally all we have to say is just application oops, application dot quit some open and close brackets and our semicolon and that's all we need and just as soon as we click that button then the game will stop running uh, and then in our play game function we need something a little bit more so what we need to do within this is basically tell the app if we go into our scenes folder tell the app to load up our next uh, our endless runner scene so we just want to tell it to open up a different scene so basically the way we do that, or no, sorry, before we say that, we're going to need to be able to tell it what scene we want it to load. So to be able to tell that, we need a string variable that we can just type in the name of whatever scene we're going to use for it to load. So we're, here we're just going to say public string, um, uh, we'll just call this play game level. So then in our play game function, all we'll say is application dot uh, load, nope, load level and then we have some brackets and then within those brackets we'll put in play game level so whatever whatever name of whatever level we set as our string here that'll just get loaded by the application lo level loader so there we go that's literally all the script we have to write for our main menu here it's very straightforward and simple so we just save that and pop back into unity And once that just compiles here, we need to, obviously we need to add this, that script to one of our objects here. And I'm just gonna add it onto our canvas here because obviously we need a canvas to be able to have any of this stuff. So that canvas isn't going anywhere. So on our add components here, we just type in main and get our main menu like that. And we've got one slot here 
which is going to be the slot for naming our endless or for choosing the name of the level to load which is our endless runner level uh, and you want to make sure here that you type in the exact same name as what you have for your scene so best thing to do is rather than trying to type it out again just click on the the name of the endless runner level here and just control and c to copy it exactly the same and then back on our canvas here paste it in there so now you, then you know you have the exact same name and you don't have to worry about what if you spell it wrong or anything like that so that's fine now it knows the name of the level to load but if we were to play the game from here and we're just going to demonstrate this um, this won't actually work for us just off the bat like that so if we go here play game nothing happens our level doesn't load nothing's going on at all so what we need to do is hook up what our buttons do so if you click on we'll go with play game play button first so we got our play button here highlighted if we scroll down the list here we've got this on click function going on so basically what this is saying okay when the, when this button is clicked on something has to happen so if we click the little plus icon we get a space created for an object which will have a script attached to it for us to run a function so if we go to our canvas that we attached our main menu script to we'll drag that into that slot and now we get this menu opened up and if we click on that these are all the components that are attached to that canvas game object so you can see you've got canvas scaler and all this stuff because we see here we can see canvas cam scaler raycaster all these different options but we, we don't want them what we want to do is go to our main menu script which we just added and from there we want to use the play game function so now when we click on play game it'll actually try and load the level that we're telling it to load so we do the exact same with our quit button add, the, add a new object drag the canvas onto it scroll down to main menu and then quit game so now when we click on that it'll quit the game so now we're one step closer to having it working but it still won't quite work when we try it now something will actually happen but uh, it will throw a little error up so if we click on that we'll see level endless couldn't be loaded because it's not been added to the build settings and that's an important thing to remember when you're creating new scenes within your game it's all well and good to create as many scenes as you want but you have to make sure they're added to the build system of the game which is essentially if we go to file here and then we go down to build settings so this is where you go when you want to export the final game for use whether on PC or any of these other platforms that you want to be able to develop on from PlayStation, Xboxes and most importantly for this kind of game iOS and Android devices so when you're ready to make your game eventually you have your space here for your building build and running the game uh, but most importantly for us right now is we need to have the scenes that are in the in the build or scenes that are in the game we need to add them in here so that our uh, application is able to load any level that we want so simply all we do is drag these both these scenes into here so now we've got two scenes created and we've both of them in here and if you you can also add the current one that you have opened in just like that but we're happy with just dragging them in uh, and the most important thing to remember with this build settings menu is whichever scene is the first one in the list is the one that will be opened when the app first becomes active so if we were to put our endless at the top like that then when the game loads up it will load straight into the endless runner level rather than going to the main menu and obviously that's not what we want at all so is the the order of all the rest of the levels doesn't really matter it's just important to remember that the first scene we have set here needs to be the first level that we load in the game so now we have both of those things added and now basically all that means is unity knows where to find uh, a scene called endless for when it tries to load that scene endless as you can see level endless and see in brackets it has minus one it has minus one because it doesn't know where that level what the number of that level should be and you can see here we've got zero and one added on at the end and if you wanted to you can load levels that way so we're using a string to load our levels if we go to our canvas we're using a string to load our levels but we could also use just an int value and we could just give that the number one and then it would know to load level one uh, because it's it's 
because it's numbered as one here. But then of course if you start adding other scenes around it can get messy because then you're uh, you might end up reordering different scenes and stuff like that and that's not very useful. But apart from that so now everything is all lined up perfectly and our lo level should load just the way we want it to. So if we hit play here wait for it to get going and now it's going we hit play and bam we're straight into our game jumping around like a maniac so there you go that's how you can make a very simple and straightforward uh, menu system oh I didn't uh, demonstrate the quick game the the thing with quick game is that code does run and if you build and test your levels it will work absolutely fine but within unity itself it's just important to know that quitting the game won't actually do anything because you can't quit out of unity by running the game itself and it doesn't it doesn't interrupt the running of the game or anything but that function does work 100 percent and go ahead and build a test version of your game test it out for yourself and you'll see that it works perfectly fine um but yeah as i was saying that's the basics of how to make a nice little main menu screen for your game obviously you can fancy it up with different buttons and different stuff like that but for the moment that'll do our our purposes just fine but of course now we have no way to get back to this main menu at the moment in the game so we need to take a look at adding a pause menu into our game and maybe even a menu for when the player gets killed uh, it'll re it'll open a little menu so we can choose to either restart or go back to the main menu so yeah thanks for watching this episode and i'll be back soon with more endless runner goodness Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page, where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.